Hey guys, uh, Obelisk here. Welcome to another um, installment of my Day Out Classic Review video. Uh, today we're going to look at Minstrels. Um, it's a class that I've, I've played before, but not not a ton. It's one of those classes that you really need to know to play super well. Um, very hard class. Um, but, you know, we'll, uh, we'll get into it and see, what, uh, see if we can learn anything today. Um, let's go ahead and get into game here. I'm first going to look at my spec, um, what abilities I get with um, each spec, really. Uh, most minstrels are, you know, there's, there's a few specs you can go, but most are going to be uh, pretty similar with one thing or two changing. But um, we'll go ahead and get into it. So, uh, so my minstrel right now is, as you can see here, 50 instruments, 44 thrusts, and a little bit of stealth. Um, now... The options you can go with a minstrel is you can. I, I think most minstrels are probably going to want fifty stealth. I think that's probably, or sorry, fifty instruments. It's probably going to be the the go to um, spec line for for each minstrel, to, to, regardless of a uh, play style. It's pretty important to have that. Where you'll have differences is how much weapon spec you have versus how much stealth spec you have. So you might want to play a stealther minstrel, um, and in that case, you can drop your weapon down a bit and get your stealth up. Um, now you'll probably, if you're wanting to go fully commit to stealth minstrel, you'll want to have um, enough stealth to reach 50 stealth composite. And what composite stealth means is you have, um, say you're rank five, and you get four points from your realm rank, because at rank two you get a point, rank three you get a point, rank four you get a point, rank five you get another point into your skills. And then you have 11 stealth from your template. That gives you a total of plus 15 stealth. Now you add that plus 15 to your, you need to spec 35 stealth, and that gives you a composite stealth of 50. So that's going to cap out your, your stealth ability. That's, that's going to be a good, a good place to, uh, to have your stealth if you're playing a full stealth or minstrel. Now, some minstrels might not really want the full stealth deal, um, but they won't climb walls. Uh, that's going to be big in keep sieges, things like that, or even soloing, small manning. It's still fun to go in keeps. Uh, you'll need 25 stealth spec for that. But other than that, you can just I keep instruments at 50 and you can just lower your thrust or slash and add points into stealth. Um, so let's just go ahead and look at the instrument line because that's what really makes minstrels minstrels. Um, so when you look at your magic tab, you have instruments and songs. Um, both of those come from your instrument line. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at songs here. Um, the, the Probably the biggest thing about minstrels is the, the permanent songs they keep up. Um, the speed six song, the um, 204 percent speed. Uh, there's a health regen song. Uh, keep gives you health regen. It stays up all the time. Uh, let's see. There we go. And then your power regen song, which is crack, palm, whatever you want to call it. Um, and you can keep that all the time. Keep that up all the time. So the interesting thing about minstrels now is you can keep all of your songs up at once. You no longer have to twist them. Um, or have only two songs up, or in the in the way way pass, you only had one song up. Um, you can literally have all of your songs up, so that's really cool. Um, you don't have to really make a choice about which songs you're playing. And it also makes using your pet and your mez song, which we'll talk about a little bit later, a lot easier. Um, so now we'll look at other other songs that you get here, uh, and these are new songs that were added relatively recently. Um, they're temporary songs. This is a celerity song. It's a 15 second duration. It's a 2000 range spell, so it affects um, everyone in your group that's within two, um, 2000 range. Um, the, the interesting about this song compared to other songs is like your speed song, your crack song, and your health regen song are all uninterruptible and castable on the move, obviously. You can run around and cast them while you're getting nuked or hit. Um, while the celerity song, for example, is castable on the move and everything, but you can be interrupted from it. So let's see. I'll start casting uh, the song and I'll nuke myself. And you see, I, I get interrupted doing it. So all of these temporary songs are interruptible. So that makes them unique compared to the other standard minstrel songs. So we have this really good celerity, 37%. Um, it's the same as Paladin celerity. So it's really strong if you can keep it up, but you can get interrupted. Uh, another song you get is this song of uh, Sorceress Reach, and that gives your group within 1500 uh, range a 10% spell range buff. So 
that's a, a really cool thing. Um, if you're chasing someone down, you need a little extra range, throw that on. Um, if you can get this up during a fight, your casters will be really appreciative. You'll be appreciative too. It'll help you get some range during the fight. And then the last temporary song um, in this line at least is this 20% secondary magic um, resistance. And we'll put that up. And that's an interesting one too because it does the same thing as say you have a uh, like a dragon ring or dragon bracer charge like ring of arcing gestures for example it essentially does the same thing but a lot better so these rings are 10 percent, whereas the song is 20 percent. so it's a lot better the issue here is and i don't know if this is a bug or not <clears throat> is you cannot you're not th these two buffs do not coexist and they obviously do not stack so if i have my ring charge up which i just used right here you can go and see that my secondary resistor at 10% and that's from that charge. And then I want to cast this. If you can see above my head, there's a little resist thing and there's no new buff here. It doesn't coexist. And you look at my resist and I only have 10% um, secondary resist. So they do not coexist. So you either kind of have to choose, do I want the permanent 10% buff with my item charge or do I want to risk it? And then we cancel that and then put this up during the fight, keep in mind this can be interrupted. So it's not something you can just permanently put up in combat if you're getting hit. So that's that's a little interesting. Um, the other, one of the most important um, deals in this uh, in the spec line is your, your flute mez. And this is a target, single target ability. It's a song, you can cast it on the move like that. You can be interrupted, so it's it's not and, and you know it's, it's not like the uh, the speed song and the crack song and stuff. It's similar to the temporary buff. So, but it, it's really good. I'll, I'll get into more of the uh, the individual dynamics of this spell later. It has some interesting characteristics and things you can do to play around with it. So we'll, we'll touch on that in a little bit later um, once I get through the rest of the uh, the abilities. So then going to the instruments tab, uh, the first spell you get at low level is a uh, is a demas. So that's just your friend gets mez, you demez it. For example, sort mez is my pet, and then I'll demez it. Pretty standard demez. Uh, the next thing is this um, this charm, and this is the control charm, the permanent charm. Uh, this this can only charm uh, monsters up to level fifty, so you can only charm yellows and lower with this, and they're under your control permanently. Um, there are definitely some drawbacks to using this other than just the lack of you know high level pets like the charm i'm using right now i'm holding a level 56 pet which is red uh this pet obviously i need a, a yellow mob uh, but there are some some significant disadvantages to using this charm over this one mainly the cc um, immunity and reduction and things like that benefits of using the better charm which i'll get to in a second and then later in the video i'll really go in depth about how that works and ways you can use it. Uh, the next spell you get is Water Breath, gives your whole group 100% um, um, movement speed in water, pretty standard. And then you get this ability, this is relatively new, it's essentially a group fault finder um, ability. So pretty good in sieges, it kind of helps bring minstrels into the, uh, the siege warfare game. Um, now the next ability is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and get out of order on the ability list here and just start talking about the instant shouts. Um, that minstrels get, or the uh, the little instant single target of offensive spells. So the first one is the instant stun. Um, this is a, a really class defining ability for minstrels too. Um, it's a 10 second reuse. And I believe the duration of the stun is about nine seconds. 1,000 range stun, really good. So I just I run up to my sort, stun it, and he's he's out of the fight for about 10 seconds. Um, really really good ability, really potent. Um, also interrupts even if they're stunning me in, so you can use it as a rup for someone that's already been stunned, so really strong. The next offensive shout you have is just an instant DD, and this is on a 15 second reuse timer, a thousand range, and does a, a, a good amount of damage. Um, let's see, it's right here. You know, hit my Sork that doesn't have resist buffs up, 26% um, body for 251, so it does a bit of damage. Um, in the group 
play, the damage is a little bit less significant because you're not really there for damage, you're there to interrupt. But in the solo game, you're using your DDs to, to put out a lot of damage. Um, they matter more for damage in solo and small man. Um, the other um, instant shout you have is another um, instant DD. It's very similar to the other one, except for it hits a little bit higher. This one hits for 289. Um, same deal, um, 1,000 range, 15 second reuse, um, just a really good interrupting ability. So with those three abilities, minstrels have, what, three abilities with 10 and 15 second reuses that they can just run around by interrupting. And then the last um, kind of shout that they have is this con instant confusion spell. So this is really interesting because it's like the other ones, 1,000 range. The issue is this is a little bit longer um, on the recast side. It's 30 second reuse instead of 10 like the other ones. So... This one's not going to be up as often, so you'll be cycling this in less. But it's still a potent interruptibility. It interrupts just like all the other ones. Um, the The cool thing about Confusion and Minstrels being on Owl might not benefit from it because Confusion is really, really good against Thurgist because if you confuse a temporary pet like a Thurgist pet, it instantly dies. Um, however, you can use this on things like Astral Blades or Trader's Dagger procs. Um, and it will instant, instantly kill the, the pet. That's what Confuse does. Sort Confuse, Minstrel Confuse, Minimalist Confuse, Bard Confuse, whatever. All the Confuse is instant kill temporary pets like that. Like they're just pets, um, pets from weapons, um, things of the sort. I can't really think of any more off the top of my head, but th there are other pets that this, this can kill. So, But primarily, you'll probably be using this as another interrupting ability. Uh, for example, I'll just start nuking myself, and then boom, Confuse. I'm going to nuke through it, but... You see it's, he's interrupted on the next spell cast, so um, just a standard erupt. Um, so this is where Minstrels really shine, using these four abilities to constantly, instantly interrupt people, um, such as healers, um, enemy casters, things like that. You'll only be running around doing that to them. And you combine that with the on-the-move mez that you can do, you can really start to dominate a fight with, with interrupts and CC. Um, really strong. Okay, so we got through the instant shouts. Um, let's go to this next. This is similar to the, the Siege Breaker deal, which was the um, um, essentially the Fault Finder for your group. Um, this, what this does is it <clears throat> reduces the amount of damage you take from Siege and also increases the swing speed of your Siege. So if you have a ram, it's going to make that ram fire faster. If you get hit by a catapult or something, it's going to reduce that damage by 50%. It's pretty good for for um, for siege warfare. And it's instant. It's pretty much up all the time. It's a five-second reuse, eight-second duration. So you can keep it up the entire fight really strong for siege warfare. Um, other than that, we have a few more abilities left in the instruments line. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get to this little wall of song. This is just a, a song that you want to keep up all the time. It's, it's like speed and crack and everything. But the, the thing about this song that's different than the other songs is you do not have to have your harp out to cast this. It's just an instant ability that you turn on and then you get a melee absorb essentially. It's a absorbs 30% of an attack up to 120 at the highest level. And it pulses, has a, a frequency and it's just, a, it's a good, it's a good ability. Um, touching back on the other songs like Speed, the Health Regen, the Crack song, and these temporary songs is you have to have your harp out. Um, you cannot, you know, cast these songs with your, you know, with a weapon equipped. You have to have that harp equipped. Um, now going back to the instruments line, we have this, and this is a relatively new spell. It's called Greater Crescendo. Now this is super strong, in my opinion. Um, it's a... a uh, a nine second duration buff with a 45 second reuse. So it has a lot of uptime, which is really important, um, but it raises your in combat speed to 160. However, you can still be stunned, mezzed, whatever. Um, and you, you can't do it through speed warps. It's essentially a kind of a, a gimp down version of charge, but you can use it on your friends and it's up every 45 seconds. Um, so say your sorcerer is just getting dominated by something. Let's Let's put this pet on him. If we can, let's see, there's my pet attack. Well, apparently, oh, I guess it's because I'm not in a duel anymore. That makes sense. The challenge, duel accept. All right, we'll put my pet on this, this sorcerer right here. 
and he can't get away because this pet's just dominating him. But if I cast my Crescendo on the Sork, you can then see the Sork can pull away. So it's really good for helping your teammates get away from tanks, or it's good for helping your tanks get in on enemy casters. Um, it's just a, it's a great ability with a lot of uses. And I'll, 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 I might touch on it a little bit later when I'm talking about strategies and stuff like that. Now, one of the, the biggest things about Minstrel, in my opinion, is this alluring melodies. And this is my pulsing charm. This is the charm that I use to charm high level mobs and to give me essentially CC immunity for me and my pet during fights if used correctly. Um, so what this does is, so I have this, let's see, let's just cancel it and release my pet. So this pet's just run around and I just target it and then cast it on it and it comes under my control. I can use this pet like any other pet, like tell it to go attack the Sork or you know come back to me, be passive. But the interesting thing about this is you can use it to break your own CC with your pet because you can release your pet on the fly and you can break your pet CC. Now let me let me cover the weapon skill lines really quick and then I'm gonna go really in depth about that and kind of show you how to use that. Um, so minstrels, they get slash and thrust. That's, that's the only weapon lines they get. I'm thrust on my minstrel, but I think slash is probably the better spec line. Um, thrust is good, you get a, uh, it's okay. You get a side, um, attack speed debuff, which is really good um, for solo and small man. Helps you, you know, debuff a, a tank's attack speed. And you get a back snare, so that's cool. Uh, you get your standard anytime style um, at level 34. And you get a couple of things like a uh, a block style, but you're, you might block every now and then on Minstrel, but don't expect to be blocking a ton. You can't spec block, you can't get master of blocking. If you want to get crazy, you can put on a blocking myth and give you a little extra blocking ability there, but I don't really know if that's worth it. Um, other than that, I think the, the main two styles that I use at least are the back style, which is a rear snare, a side attack speed debuff, and my anytime style. Um, I, don't, I don't use anything else just because you're not getting off evade styles very often. You're not getting off after block styles. Um, just really not worth worth fooling with in my opinion. There's a, a two part bleed chain, but um, use that if you want to uh, prohibit your enemies um, health regen, like from a health myth or something. Um, there's also actually, hold on, there's a, uh, a one part bleed style in puncture, which I didn't know. That's a, uh, a decent deal then, which chains into another bleed. So uh, that's fine. That's, that's good to use for, um, taking out people's health regen. Now Slash, Slash is a little bit better in my opinion. Let's go up to just 44, mirror my thrust spec. The reason I like Slash is you get a, a strong back snare, but you do you get a back snare and thrust too, but you also get a side snare in, uh, in Slash. And in my opinion, and, and if you're 1v1ing, hitting the side style is a little bit easier than hitting the back style, um, like run through side styling people. So I, I like, being able to uh, to go for that side snare so I can kite if I need to. Um, another cool thing is you get this cross slash ability, um, which is a frontal style and it is an attack speed debuff. And then that chains into a bleed style. So you get your bleed there from slash, from a two part front chain. Um, your anytime style amethyst, amethyst slash is um, just similar to the thrust anytime, just your standard anytime. You get a block chain um, that actually you can use to get a stun off don't really see that happening very often. Um, but if you can block and you want to melee stun someone, say you're fighting a, a debt nine tank and you get a block off, you can use Riposte and then um, Befuddler to melee stun them for full duration. So there's that. Other than that, that's pretty much the melee lines covered. Um, like I said, at 20, uh, 25 stealth, you get climb walls. It doesn't show up on the spec list, but that's the, uh, the time you can climb into keeps um, with your minstrel. Um, other than that, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and mention some RA specs. Now, the way I view minstrels in groups, at least, is that they are there. Their purpose is to just be annoying to the enemy healers and casters and support and things like that. Um, you're really not there to do damage. You're really not there to peel. You're just there to interrupt and to provide a little bit of CC. Um, so the RAs I choose for group are generally focused on group utility and survivability. So let's just pull up the RA list. Um, 
Speed of sound's a big one. You'll probably want it. You'll, you'll want Sauce 2, I think, Speed of Sound 2. You don't really need Speed of Sound 3, but I have it just because I think I was small manning and having extra Speed of Sound um, when you're trying to sauce away from a group can be really useful. Um, but if, you're, if you aren't in a group, I don't really know if you need more than Sauce 2, especially if you have duration in your template. The duration in your template will affect the duration of Speed of Sound. Um, purge, I have Purge 5. Um, you can get away with much lower Purge, like a Purge 3 or um, Purge 4, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, but you, you have no debt. You do have a pet, and I'll, like I said, I'll, I'll get to this a little bit later. You have a pet that can really help you with CC, but if your pet dies, you're kind of on your own at that point. So I like having a high level of purge. Um, other than that, mastery concentration is, it can be really good. And, and here's, here's why. So you might want to pick up mastery concentration one. You don't need to put a lot of points into it. Mach 1 gives you the ability to just mock demez your group if, if things really hit the fan and your Sorks mez, your Friars mez, um, a Cleric's mez, and you really got to get people out of mez, you can mock and start demezzing um, and people can't erupt you. So that's really strong. Another thing you can do is you can use your mock and then run around and flute mez people without getting interrupted. Like say you really need to be interrupting people and just the instant DDs and your melee is not cutting it, you can't get close enough to people and you're just erupted, you can't use your flute mez, mock and just start flute mezzing people. The the drawback here, and what you have to be careful for if you do that, is if you mock and CC something, that CC um, duration is greatly reduced. You'll have, um, I don't even know how much mock one is, it doesn't say, I think 25%, um, you'll, you'll do 25% of the the CC duration, so you'll want to do this when you're not really worried about mezzing targets. You're just worried about erupting them and uh, making sure they're not casting. Um, if possible, do it on CC mean like mezzing mean targets, but it won't be the end of the if you hit a target with a mez. Mezzes don't really last a ton, a very long anyway in today's game. Um, other than that, I like IP even on group minstrels. At least maybe IP two. You don't need IP three. I don't think it's just something another instant heal for yourself. Um, to keep you alive if, you're, if your healers can't heal you. Um, other than that, you can look at AM. Um, don't even know how to say this name. I'm not even going to try, whatever. Um, AM is a group heal over time, essentially. It's a group hot, sort of. It does not affect you. It does not affect the minstrel, but it affects everyone in your group. Um, it's a 15-minute reuse, so it's kind of a long reuse. It's, it's sort of a luxury um, ability, in my opinion. Uh, so it's something I might get if I'm really high rank. So get a couple points of AM if you want, and if people start taking a lot of damage, you can pop AM. It'll help your healers out a little bit, but it's not a crucial RA for minstrels, but it is nice in my opinion. Uh, so that covers all the active RAs. Um, I don't really know if there's anything else that's bought um, frequently, um, but minstrels can get a lot of work out of some of the passive RAs, especially for survivability. Um, like I said, I, play, I like to play my minstrel as a very just get in there, be annoying, and survive. So I'm not really going to look for things like wild minion, wild power, master majory, or anything like that to give me extra damage in a group setting. That's just me. If you want to be a damage minstrel, go for it, by all means. But I like to buy things like avoidance of magic if I'm fighting a lot of caster groups. Maybe get AOM 7. Maybe not go up to AOM 9 unless you're super high rank, but maybe stop at AOM 7. Um, and you're going to you're gonna have to be pretty high rank on Minstrel because a lot of these active abilities cost a lot. But after that, um, you can look at getting things like Master Your Focus because that helps your Mez, that helps your Stun. Your Stun's level 40, your Mez is level 42, so they will need some help for Master Your Focus. Uh, maybe look at getting Focus 2 or 3 if you really want those spells to stick. I'd, I'd go a couple points into Focus. Um, after that, you got your high AOM. Maybe, maybe a little bit of Toughness. Toughness isn't the best buy, but... If you really want to be tanky, that's that's the next step. Um, and after that, yeah, you, you can maybe look at some damage at that point if you if you want to, um, or just maybe get some some more AOM or some more purge or or something like that. But um, you can you can look at getting things like majory or, or wild power, maybe even wild minion if you want your pet to dominate. Um, so those are kind of my group RAs for solo. You'll do something similar, I think. You won't get AOM if you're soloing. Maybe if you're small manning, AOM's pretty strong. But for solo, no. You you might not get mock for solo. You can always, if you get in trouble, mock mez something off yourself. But I don't really know if it's really worth it solo. Um, 
there's so many other ways you can get away on Minstrel that I don't think you'll need that one. So I, I'd still get your speed of sound, two or three. I'd get a, whatever level of purge you're comfortable with. It's all about how, how much you want the reuse timer to be lowered on purge. And then get some IP. That's definitely a good buy solo. And then you're kind of free to, uh, to start looking at some passive RAs. And if you're soloing, you need to kill stuff because you're the only one doing damage. So at that point, you can start looking at things like um, wild power, that would give your uh, um, spell abilities, your DDs, a chance to crit. Master Magery is going to increase the damage of your, your two DDs. And even Wild Minion, if you're using a pet a lot and relying on the pet for damage, this will allow the pet to, to crit. It gives it the, the, the pet a nice crit chance. You'll still want your, uh, you'll definitely want your Master of Focus because you really need your spells to land in solo. So get a couple points into Master of Focus. Master of Focus 2 or 3 is good. And then... Um, if you want, you can get some some melee RAs. I, I wouldn't because the play style of solo isn't really you getting in there and meleeing the whole time on Minstrel, at least in my opinion. So that's kind of the gist for um, for your RAs. Now I'm going to get into some strategy um, that I would I would use on Minstrel in, in groups and solo. Actually, before I get into that, let me go ahead and look at the Pulsing Charm and the Castable um, Flute Mez. Uh, so we'll start with the flute mess first. It's down here. Um, this is really interesting because you can just you can you can run around. I'm lagging right now. I'm not in a duel with my bot. Sorry. Challenge. Duel accept. Sorry, I keep uh, getting hit by my pet randomly. So you can just use this and run around. That's super good. Now, one of the interesting things about this ability is you have once to start the cast, you have to be facing or not facing, but you have to be in the frontal arc. They have to be in your line of sight. So I, I can't start mezzing from, if I'm looking away, if I'm looking sideways, I can't see it. I still can't mez it. However, if I start my mez here, I can then turn around. For the mez to land, you have to be looking at your target. So if you can see right here, my chat window is freaking out saying, um, you cannot see your target. The song, if you can see, yeah, see, I'll, I'll even click my pet a few times so you can see that's still going. As soon as I turn around, it's going to mez my sorcerer because the, the spell is still going. It's it's still waiting for that 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 mez to land. Um, and at this point, I can get erupted as much as I want. I'm still going to land that spell. So then I'm going to turn around, and you're going to see the sword get mez. The really cool thing is I can say my sword's chasing me. And then I turn around, I start my mez, and then I run, you know, get some, some line of sight, break line of sight, and then turn around and boom, hit my sword with the mez. It resisted there, but that's beyond the point. So I'll, I'll try again. This is really cool. You can you can mess someone and literally run. Hell, you can run you can run from Odin's Gate to Main if you want, and then come back and mez the guy. Um, you're not going to be able to do much because it, it kind of locks your flute up. You can't start mezzing someone else. So you can't like try to mez three people and then turn around and then mez them all at the same time when you look at them. But um, for example, I'm, I'm, I'm too far right now. It says uh, your target is too far away. But as soon as I get into 1500 range, it's going to mez them. So this is a really interesting way to use the mez. You start the mez and then you can break line of sight. You can see this sort just got mez when I got close. You can break line of sight. You can break range. Um, that way he can't interrupt you. A lot of the times, if someone's chasing me on Minstrel, like if I'm if I'm small manning and um, I'm with my buddy, I need to demess my sword, he's messed, um, and we're getting chased by, by three people, we're two people, we'll kite a little bit, and then they'll get close, they'll get in mez range. I'll turn around, start casting my song, and then keep running until the song ends and turn around and boom, they're mezzed. Well, sort of immune, but obviously the spell landed. And then you can think it in there. It's not putting you at risk to get interrupted from that mez from a cast ability. They can still instant you and interrupt you and stuff, but they're not really going to be able to cast another 1500 range spell on you and interrupt you um, just because their cast speed's not that high. If you start at max range and then turn around and run, it's just a really interesting way. It's a really interesting dynamic. That's the only spell like that, I think. I, I don't. I can't think of anything else off the top of my head that functions this way. So... Have some fun with that. Um, it's it's a lot of fun in my opinion. Now the next thing is this pulsing pet charm, and this is what makes minstrels really good in groups because 
It makes the minstrel essentially unseeable, and it gives you an unseeable pet. So first off, let's let's look at what we need to put on our quick bars to make this work quickly. So I like having a a, a macro ability that I can use or a macro that I can put on my quick bar to target my pet. And to do that, you hold down shift and then you come down here to your pet window and you click on the pet's name right here. Just click it and then it'll give you, it'll pull out a little macro that says pet and you can throw it on your quick bar and then I can click it or press seven and it'll target my pet for me. And then you want a pet release button. So you'll do the same thing, hold down shift and then click release and it'll give you another cubine and you can throw that on the quick bar as well. And then here's my song right here. That's the actual spell. So what I like to do, the, the concept behind the way that you break CC on your pet is the pet gets messed. And I, I can't really show you this in a realm duel because as soon as I release my pet, it puts me in PVE combat, which cancels the duel. But I'll just, I'll, I'll explain it to you and I'll kind of show you, I'll walk, I'll, 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 I'll go through the actions. So my pet gets mez, my pet's mez right now, let's just assume that, or it gets rooted, works with roots too. As soon as I release my pet, that CC goes away. So I can release and then it'll recharm in a second. Now the, th the thing I have, the reason I have the pet um, target window on my quick bar is this, I'll, um, the pet will get messed. I'll use my button or my little macro to target my pet in case I, I, I'm in a fight, a lot of stuff's happening. I can't just pan around and click it, find it real quick. I just know it's messed. I'll just use that button and then I will um, release the pet with this button. And then I will then double click my charm and then bring it back under my control instantly. So it doesn't give it that downtime of just kind of running off and being useless or getting CC'd again or something like that. So that's the quickest way to do it is to use a macro to target your pet, release it, and then double click your charm. And the pet's out of my control for like half a second, really not long, but it breaks the CC. As soon as I release it, that mez is gone, that root's gone. So that's really strong. Um, Unseeable pets are insane, especially high level ones that are hard to kill. Now the way I can use this pet to break my CC um, let's just say my Sork messes me. Like I said, I, I can't really actually do this in a Realm Duel because it's going to kick me out of the duel, um, the way Realm Duels function. But I get CC'd and my pet's just off fighting someone. So I have my pet um, running to my Sork. My pet's corrupting him. I get messed. What I need to do is bring my Sork back to me or my pet back to me. So it's going to run back to me. And then what I do is I cancel my charm by pressing the charm button once, my learning melodies once, and then I'll release my pet. And then my pet's gonna run over and kick me, and then I'll click it and recharm it. If I'm, if I messed, all the pet has to do is hit me. It doesn't have to land the swing, so that's good. Um, and then I recharm it instantly. If I get rooted, what I need to do is bring my pet back to me. If I have pulsing blade turn or any sort of blade turn up, I need to go up here and cancel it to make it as smooth as possible so the pet's not sitting there swinging at me for three seconds hitting pbt and stuff because it actually needs to hit me and do damage to break a root so let's just pretend that this wall of song is pbt so what i'll do is i'll pass my pet bring it back to me i won't release it until it's at me if i can help it because if i'm mezzed and i just release my pet before it's close to me to break it and then the pet gets mezzed or rooted or something before it gets to me it's not going to break my cc and then the pet is just it's not my pet anymore. So I want to bring it to me and then release it. So let's pretend this wall song is PBT. What I'm going to do is cancel this by shift right clicking it and then quickly release my pet and let it hit me and then recharm it. Um, so that's, that's the quickest way of um, breaking your root. If you have PBT, if you don't have PBT or things like that, it should hit you anyway. Uh, I wouldn't look at it or anything so you don't evade it. So make sure it hits you in the back. So you have no chance to evade. Um, don't have your weapon out to block it. And that's that's pretty much it for breaking roots. Now there's I'm gonna cover a scenario, say you and your pet gets gets mezzed. So this is where you have to take a little bit of a risk. So my pet's over here. Just send my pet to my sork. I get mezzed and then my pet gets mezzed. So I can't put my pet on passive to bring it to me first. So what I have to do at that point 
is take a gamble and just release it. And it's going to break its meds and it's going to run to me. If my charm is still up, I'll recharm it. So your, your charm pulses every few seconds and you can release a pet, but have your charm still going. So it'll only be out of your control until the charm repulses. Um, so that's an interesting dynamic too, but you can cancel your charm and then cast it again to get it instantly if you want to. But if you're Mez and your pet's Mez, I wouldn't cancel your charm yet. I'd just release your pet, let it break its CC, and then hopefully come back under your control with the pulsing charm and then put it on passive and have it run to you, then release, let it hit you. Oops, release, let it hit you, and then recharm. That's the that's kind of the rundown on the uh, the minstrel pulse charm and when, and things you can do to uh, to kind of get out of most CC situations. It's not going to work on stuns for you or your pet, obviously, but for mezzes and roots, this thing's insane. Um, some some general strategies um, that you can you can do on minstrel is. Say you're running into a, uh, a fight in, in a group situation and you're fighting uh, two casters and then there's you're fighting an SM and RM and then there's an AUG healer back there. What you can do is you can put your pet on um, put your pet on the on the SM for example. And then what you can do is you can run over to the RM and start meleeing it. So you're keeping the SM rupted from your pet. The pet's just sitting there beating on him. You can keep the arm erupted by, by you meleeing it. And then you can use, if the healer's close enough, if he's in 1,000 range, you can sit there, swing on the uh, the RM every now and then, and then click the healer, erupt it, go back to the RM, continue meleeing it. And then at, in about three or four seconds, if the healer is starting to cast, click on them again, use another instant DD or something. And then go back to meleeing the RM and then go back once the healer's about to start casting again, hit him with a confuse or a stun or something. And then if you want, you can pull out um, pull out your, your harp and then mez one of them. You know, you can then mez the, uh, the the target your pet's on, passive your pet, throw the pet on the healer, and then stay on the RM. You can do so much interrupting on a minstrel, it's insane. And you you're you're pretty tanky. You have um, a phase shift, you have a zephyr, you have hopefully IP if you're high enough rank. Um, you can template a lot of help and hits and things like that. Um, so you can make yourself pretty, pretty dang annoying and um, difficult to kill, at least to a certain point, um, and just stay alive and stay in there and erupt. It's a, it's a really, really interesting class. Um, some, some solo or small man strategies might be to uh, go grab you a pet. Um, pets are really good buffed. So if you really want to, you can take your pet back to your bot if you have a bot. Um, throw some some red buffs on it. Um, pets aren't affected by buff cap, so whereas you can get away with using um, yellow bases and like yellow dex quick on you because you you cap out at like 155 as as a buff cap. Your pets aren't affected by that 155 buff cap, so use all red buffs on your pets if you're buffing it. Um, if you don't have a bot, uh, I recommend getting CL buffs, like the CL concentration buffs you can cast on your yourself and your realmates. Um, get you some buff bonus, get a star drop or some other set of buff bonus, throw it on and then buff your pet after you get it. It's going to make your pet hit a lot harder um, and survive a lot longer. Um, some general strategies to throw your pet in. Um, get seal disease also on menstrual, it's pretty important. Let your pet beat on, if you're fighting, a, say you're fighting a uh, uh, like a, a champ or something 1v1, throw your pet in there and stand back and dis cast a seal disease on it. And then use your two instant DDs to do some damage. I wouldn't let the champ hit you if I could help it. Um, but then kite away. If the champ runs at you, kite a little bit. Keep it diseased. Your pedal continuously beat on it. It should be slower. Uh, if it gets close, you can insist on it. And then if you want to, um, if you need to, you can mez it, pull your pet off, um, reset the fight a little bit. If another ad comes, um, if you're not in there mailing the champ, you can just mez that ad and then figure out what you need to do from there. But, um, so I think kiting on minstrel is super strong. A lot of people might think it's cheesy or whatever. It might get really annoyed if you're doing it to them, but it's part of the game. It's kind of what makes a minstrel strong. Um, but if you're in there meleeing the whole time and you get a you're fighting a champ and then some some vamp runs up, you can't you don't have a chance to even mez it before it gets to you or ch before it charges. So um, I think having distance on minstrel is strong, and you'll kill things anyway if you keep them diseased and you keep DDing them every 15 seconds. These DDs add up. And your pet obviously does damage, keeps it rupted also. So 
that's strong. If if they if you get caught by something, hit crescendo, get the heck out of there. Um, use your uh, your rank five. Also need to touch on rank five. Your rank five is a PBOE um, 600 radius instant mez. It doesn't last very long. It's a 20 second mez, but it's a pretty potent mez. Um, it'll hit a lot of people. It's really strong. Um, it's really good for getting away. Uh, one thing I actually didn't touch on earlier was this uh, casted AOE mez. And it's okay. I don't think it's used too often. It's got such a slow cast time on it. It's a, a five second cast. Um, obviously I don't have dex bus right now, so it's going to take me forever, but it takes a little while to cast and it isn't super long. Um, it's, it, it's listed at 30 seconds. Now, one thing I, I will mention about this single target flute mez, this one right here, it's listed at 20 second duration. That is a lie. I'm pretty sure it's probably about a 40 second or 35 second duration. It lasts a lot longer. Um, once my sword comes out of this mez and I can, I can mez again in a minute, once mez immunity fades, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how long it lasts on my sword with resist. But um, it's, it's a lot longer than 20 seconds. That 20 seconds is a lie. I can tell you that for 100% fact. Um, but uh, let's see. Yeah, so back to the solo strategy. Just I like to keep my distance on most things. Um, a lot of people don't like that play style, but I think it works well. That's what I would do. Um, you can get in there and melee some and then get away if you need to with crescendo and things like that, but it's, it's up to you. Um, some tip learning ideas for the solo game. You'll, you'll want it, uh, some sort of chess piece with a heal over time proc. That's going to be timeless indigo mail. It's going to be your Aria Light chess piece. It's going to be your cursed set chess piece. Um, I think those are really nice for minstrels, especially if you're kiting a lot. It procs, you kite, you get a ton of health back as you're kiting from the heal over time. Um, I'm a huge fan of those cursed blood gauntlets, those new cursed um, gloves. Though that, that particular set has a 25% instant heal that's usable in combat. It's like a mini IP. It's going to heal you for probably like, I don't know, maybe 700 or so um, once you're templated and everything. So that's pretty strong. Another ability or another item for solo that you probably really, really kind of need is the Ghostly Medal of Valor. That's a 10% hot. It ticks every five seconds, I think, and is a 20 second duration. So that's pretty strong. It's the same same charge as on that's on Eternal Plant. I don't really know why people didn't use Eternal Plant more that could, but everyone's using Ghost of Mela Valor. It's so good for small men. Um, I would also, um, you know, just get some heal procs in your template. I, I think heal bonus is really good on Minstrel too, especially if you're getting hit a lot. Um, you can definitely do it without heal bonus, but it's kind of like, do you want your procs to be more potent? It's kind of in your heal procs and your IP. Heal bonus affects all, all your heals you're using on yourself. Um, I, I um, you need a melee resist charge, whether it be from a ring or a bracer or a uh, like an otherworldly agile belt, for example, has the 10% heal, or uh, sorry, 10% um, melee charge. That's really strong solo. You might want to get yourself a, a magic charge too if you want. Um, it's really up to you there. I like croc tier ring. I'd like to have conversion in my menstrual templates for solo and group. What conversion does is it takes hits. Um, if you get hit for 100, it takes 5% of that and heals your health and sorry heals your uh, power and end instead um so you're getting hit for 95 at that point and you're getting some power in um in back um you can get i think 10 percent um it's pretty easy nowadays i think the uh obviously croc tier has five percent this other world the uh agile belt has three percent and i'm pretty sure the um the curse, some of the curse pieces for minstrel have a little bit of conversion too so i really like getting that conversion up to 10. Um, also your harps that you can buy, I don't have them on me, but the ancient drum and then the frozen harp or whatever it's called, the, uh, Jack Frost harp, they have a, a magic resist charge, like the 10% magic resist charge, but they also have the winged helm charge on them, the 75% style reduction. So it really makes you hard to kill to tanks. So that's pretty, pretty strong. Um, you can, you can even hold two of them. So you can have that buff up pretty much all the time. You can hold one in your two hand slot, one in your range slot. Uh, those are super strong harps. Um, I'd use those solo and in group. Um, for groups, I think you really need the either Astral Cloak of Heroes, which gives you the 30% secondary magic resist charge for 20 seconds, or, and if you can fit this, it's probably better, this Cloak of the Loyal Minstrel, which is a 40%, or sorry, a 40% to uh, your magical resist, so it's a little more potent than the Astral Cloak of Heroes. I'd try to throw in this Cloak of the the loyal minstrel 
Um, also, the other, if you if you can, if you need to, the other use on this um, loyal minstrel cloak is it summons a new pet for you. So say you're in a fight and your pet dies, it gets nuked down, and now you're able to get CC'd over and over. That's really frustrating. If you have this cloak, you can summon a new pet, and it'll just create a pet right beside you, and then you can quickly instant charm it with your pulse charm, and you, boom, you have a new pet ready to go. So that's pretty good. Um, I would put that in a group template for sure. Um, also, in a group template, I'd still get those Curse Glove gauntlets. Um, I'd really look at getting 10% conversion in a group template, just make you more tanky. I like to get a lot of con and hits, and uh, it's me, obviously, cap your resist. But in a group template, I like my duration obviously being capped. Even a solo template, you want to be capped on duration. And I like getting as much hits and con as I can. I just want to be, I just want to live. That's pretty much my goal. Live and interrupt. Um, the Cursed set. There's a three-piece set um, on the new Cursed campaign that you can get on Minstrels. Uh, if you wear all three, your instant stun is increased by two seconds. So that's really strong solo small man. Um, still pretty strong in groups too if you're relying on that stun to actually stun people other than just rep people. So maybe look at getting that. That could be a good idea. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, magic Charge, if you can fit it on the, uh, the group Minstrel temp. Um, also, for groups, your weapon that you want to use 100% is Trader's Dagger. You are not there to, to do damage. You are there to interrupt, in my opinion. So you're not doing much damage with Traders, but you are proccing little pets. And this is the best pet proccing weapon, in my opinion. It's a fast attack speed. It's 3.5 second attack speed, so you can get out of a lot of hits. Um, the pets are really good. They, they proc a decent amount. They last for 15 seconds. It's a decent duration. So you want to run around and start hitting people with your Traders Dagger, getting pet procs, because that just helps you erupt even more. So use use Traders for sure in group, 100%. That should be probably the only weapon you use, unless you're trying to peel something, and then you can throw on like a Pixlayer weapon or something to snare something if you don't want to break the snare with a pet. Um, other than that, I think that's that's mostly it for Minstrel. I I might have missed something. This is actually the second time I've filmed this Minstrel video because um, I, I missed um, some of the stuff about this uh, this cool flute mez. Actually, while I'm at it, let me, let me flute mez my sorky gun. I'll tell you how long it lasts. Okay, it lasts 33 seconds on my sork. And my sork has, uh, was energy? Sork has 26 energy resist. And I have, I believe, um, 25 duration in this template. So 32 seconds um, against normal resist. Actually, I only have 20% duration. Um, this might be a messed up template, but yeah. So you'll definitely uh, definitely be messing people longer than 20 seconds like the double list. It's 32 seconds on this sort. Um, so yeah, I think that's mostly it about Minstrel. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Um, suggestions, anything like that, let me know. Uh, anything you want done class-wise that I haven't done already. I'm gonna try to get to everything, so. But if you have a request, I can, I can get to it sooner, um, for sure. Because I'm really doing these in no particular order. I'm going to do Bard next, I think, because someone requested that. Then after that, it's, it's up to whatever. Um, thanks for watching again. That was the, uh, the minstrel class on Albion. Hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed and maybe learned something. Thank you.